Ladies and gentlemen, I've decided after much ponderance to go ahead and launch this campaign. And you say, what campaign is that there, Razor Blade Slim? <laughs> well, let me tell you. Let me give you a little history first before I start this campaign. Back in 1954, our favorite president, Mr. Lyndon Baines Johnson, got a law passed that says, basically, the government can order the churches, the clergy of these United States of America to cease and desist making any political statements, be they left, right, or indifferent, about the elected members of the various positions that they hold. I'll just keep it plain and simple, because I'm a plain and simple guy. <laughs> now, since then, they have put into place the 501c3. And that basically entails pretty much that they can file their income taxes every year in the form of charity or we'll just say organizations that receive and give away stuff. But the conditions are they have to stay political neutral. We'll just say that. But they get to keep the 10% that they collect from all their sleeple in the church, their constituents, their parishioners, whatever you want to call them. We're talking about any of the variety of churches or synagogues, whatever you want to call them. And ever since then, the churches have pretty much stuck to that illegality as if it was binding. But recently, we've had a situation occur called Freedom Sunday, October 2nd, 2011, where over 500 clergy got together and decided to buck that criminally insane system that violates the First Amendment to the max, which says that the government can't uh, regulate or control or abridge or basically silence any religion. So those freedom fighters on October 2nd, 2011 called press conferences and invited the IRS to come witness them bucking that Lyndon Baines Johnson system. And they actually talked about some of the things that the government was doing. Like, you take your pick. Start us. I'm sure some of them talked about the illegal wars going on. 9-11 being an inside job, etc., etc. But those who didn't participate, they've since learned that the laws were in place before Lyndon stepped in, and they know that the government can never control what's said at the pulpit. But they've opted to follow those illegal orders anyway. So to those individuals, those clergy responders, it's like three million of them now. So... I decided to go ahead and launch a campaign of sending you out a 501c3 hose unholy Bible to represent your position as government, I'll call you pimptitutes, because you're pimping your parishioners and you're being pimped, hold out by the government. So you, you occupy both roles. <laughs> you're getting paid for your silence. And your silence is legion because the things the government is getting away with, they never would have got away with it if people like Martin Luther King were still here because he talked about the illegal wars. He talked about the drug running out of Laos and all the other unsavory things that the government's been doing. But since you clergy responders and you 501c3ers, have decided to go ahead and go along to get along and gotten rich in the process, I'm going to make sure that every last one of you get a copy of this freshly printed, finely <laughs> constructed, unholy Bible commemorating your <laughs> devotion and commitment to the criminally insane government. Now, the printing presses are on fire right now. I've commissioned some of the finest 
publishers in America to crank out as many as fast as they can to get them to all you pimptitudes sitting out there. So I guess my final statement would be that as our armies conquer the world using good Al-Qaeda to do it, as this crusade that we're running all over the Middle East continues, when it finally reaches America, using NATO, the UN, and all kind of other unsavory forces, when they reach America's shores and start burning and looting, the first thing they're going to do is come to their number one flunkies, their number one minions. That's right, the 501c3 hoes. And I hope you have these this plaque hanging on your wall because they'll know how to identify you. And your churches will be burning because the first thing the enemy does is burn those who aided in a better because they know <laughs> who the real traitors are. <laughs> and that includes everybody from Jesse, Bug Eye Jackson to formerly Macy's Parade balloon head Al Sharpton now inflated, deflated balloon head Sharpton to, you pick your favorite reverend, John Hagee, nah, what's that other, the old dude who can barely stand now, uh, B Billy Graham and his ilk, uh, we'll even go with Robert, uh, Pat Robertson, he could have had a voice in stopping all this madness, but he chose to stay quiet, so to all you Reverends, pastors, clergy, fathers, sit tight. Your copy's coming. And to all you sleeper who let them stay quiet in the pulpit, there'll be enough copies for you too. Deacons, all of y'all. Oh. <laughs> anyway, I think I've rambled on enough. I think I made my point. And uh, in closing, I guess I'll say nothing comes to sleepers. But a lot of pain is going to come to those who slept on these most important events in history. Let's go over them again. 9-11 being an inside job, the poisoning of our food with GMOs, the spraying of our skies, massive abortions being forced upon people everywhere, vaccination poison. You name it, you preachers have stood silently and collected money while you were doing it. All the while claiming, well, the end is near anyway, so we might as well just sit back and wait for the glory while you got fat. All righty then, I guess I'll leave it at that. Sign it off. And sleep. <laughs> the pleasure was all mine. Have a nice day.